I looked through every Pokemon move to decide which is the worst of each base power. We went through the best of the best, now it's time to see the stinkers. These moves aren't all bad necessarily, especially when we get to the higher base power moves, but you'd be surprised how many powerful moves are useless competitively. We are looking at the moves used competitively, but since this is the worst moves list, a lot of these moves aren't even seen competitively. So for that, I'm theorizing which move would be worse to use in most competitive situations, while taking them into account in-game to an extent. Characteristics like accuracy, typing, and secondary effects will be considered, and signature moves are fair game here. I will be including the moves at their listed base powers, so a move like Avalanche that doubles in power if the user was hit will still be considered 60 base power. Let me know your opinions on what the worst moves for each base power are, so make sure to leave a comment. Let's see the first move. Coming in at 10 base power, we see Constrict. This move has effectively the worst base power in the game. Unlike its competition triple kick, this move only hits once. It has the mediocre normal type, which, spoiler alert, we will be seeing quite a bit in this video. This move was actually nerfed too, which I find hilarious. It had a 1 in 3 chance of lowering speed in generation 1, and since then it has been changed to a 10% chance. So this move is pretty much useless, and you would be better off with any other move. Moving up to 15 base power, we have the move Barrage. This is the signature move of the executor line, and gee whiz is this move dumb. It's a multi-hit normal type move that doesn't differentiate itself from other moves like Double Slap and Fury Attack. It does have more PP than Double Slap, but Barrage is blocked by the ability Bulletproof, making it useless against a few lines. This move just plain stinks and deserves to be here. For a non-multi-hit move, I'll put Bind. The trapping residual damage isn't bad, but a lot of the Pokemon who get Bind also get Wrap which is the same move essentially with 90% accuracy instead of 85%. At 18 base power we have Fury Swipes. This is the only move at 18 base power besides Comet Punch, which won the spot for best 18 base power move due to it being boosted by Iron Fist. At 20 base power there are actually a lot of good moves. I had a tough time deciding the best, but for the worst I'm going to have to give it to the move Rage. It was changed multiple times from its debut in generation 1 but still is a super weak normal move that requires you to be attacked to have any payoff. I guess it could be used in conjunction with the runner up, Spike Cannon, and Doubles to have a use since Rage raises your attack one stage if you are hit while under the effects of this move. I put it below moves like Absorb and Mud Slap due to them having better offensive typings, healing in Absorb's case, and a nice accuracy drop for Mud Slap. For the 25 base power moves, we see all multi hit moves. These are really solid attacks, especially now with loaded dice and skill link making sure you don't only get 2 or 3 hits. For the worst one of these, I'm going with Twin Needle. It is the only one of these moves that hits just twice, so you're capping at 50 base power, whereas the other multi strike moves here go from 50 to 125 base power. Having the bug typing doesn't help either. It does carry a decent 20% chance of poisoning the target each hit but it's just too weak to not be the worst out of the options here. We have a mix of solid moves and not great moves at 30 base power. My top contenders are Astonish and Smog, both weak moves that have decent secondary effects. Astonish has a 30% flinch chance, while Smog has a 40% chance to poison. The reason I'm torn here is because I feel the poison chance for Smog is really nice, but it only has 70% accuracy meaning that chance is effectively a lot lower because you have to factor in actually hitting first. Where Astonish should always have that 30% flinch chance if you outspeed. I think I'm going to have to give it to Smog because it's a move I'd have a harder time clicking in a match. It's hard enough even clicking better moves like Focus Blast with that low accuracy and the payoff isn't that great here. At 35 base power we have Double Hit, a bunch of solid trapping moves, and then the move Peck. Peck is the big loser here, as it doesn't have anything going for it. It's an early game move with no secondary effect that is immediately replaced once an upgrade is learned. It has nothing to set it apart from other damaging flying type attacks, and all the other 35 base power moves have a lot more going for them. For 40 base power moves, there are a lot of useful moves both in game and competitively. Starter moves are usually this power, along with basic priority moves. I'm going to rank the moves Pound and Scratch as the worst here. This is due to their normal typing granting no super effective hits, them having no secondary effects, 
there being other early game normal type moves that are just stronger, and them not having any special in-game use other base 40 normal moves have, like false swipe and hold back being good for catching Pokemon, or Payday giving you that cash money. The reason Tackle isn't also here is because that's the homie. It may be identical to Scratch and Pound, but I'm not adding it to the worst. Plus in Gen 5 and 6 it was a little stronger, so it had its time to shine for a bit. In the 45 base power spot, we see the fall from grace for the move Vine Whip. It flew too close to the sun in our best move of each base power video, too much partying and showboating caught up to it, and it realized that as much as it fit in as the best 45 base power move, it just as much fit in with the worst. It's the only move at this power, so it gets to be in both videos. Vine Whip, we salute ya. <sighs> I'm about to bust. At 50 base power, we're going to beat up on everyone's least favorite HM, cut. This move and rock throw are the only moves at this base power that don't have at least some kind of positive secondary effect. Cut may have a little bit more accuracy than rock throw, but rock is a decent offensive typing at least. Cut is just a move you would only use in game when you had to use an HM. It just sucks. It should have a high crit chance at least. It is boosted by sharpness now, except no Pokemon with this ability learns it ironically. 55 base power only offers a few choices. Most of them are pretty decent moves actually. Then we have Vice Grip, a move seen mostly on crab Pokemon and Pokemon with pincers. It is a normal type move with no secondary effect, just does low, non-stab damage. Nothing exciting about this move. 60 base power has a ton of options. Almost all of these moves have at least a decent secondary effect. There are moves like Round, Wing Attack, and Magnet Bomb I considered but can still be solid in certain scenarios. In the end, I had to go with yet another normal type move in Covet. Covet is a move you don't really see. It's essentially the move Thief, as it can steal a target's item if you aren't holding one, but you would much rather use Thief due to its great dark typing. Covet wouldn't be a good coverage option, and you have access to so many better normal type attacks. There's a pretty sizable overlap of the Pokemon who have access to both, with Thief being more accessible since it's been a TM since Generation 2. 65 base power moves are here, and what do you know, we have another lame normal type attack. I promise we don't have too many more, and I'm not trying to pick on this type intentionally. We see Horn Attack here though, being a serviceable early game attack, but lacks a secondary effect. The closest move that I can see being worse than this is a move like Bone Club. It has a worse 85% accuracy, and a pretty mild 10% chance to flinch. But the ground type has a lot of super effective hits, so I can't justify putting this move that would see use if distributed more below horn attack. At 70 base power, we are getting away from the normal type. They actually have a bunch of usable moves here. The worst move here is going to Vital Throw. I was actually torn between this and the terrible smelling salts. While Vital Throw does have the solid fighting typing to it, it also is a negative priority move. It will almost always attack last leaving you open for hits against even the slowest opponents. Unlike Avalanche or Revenge, this move doesn't have double damage or anything to reward this detrimental trait. Instead, it ignores accuracy and evasiveness to always hit. Not very impressive. I'd rather use Wake Up Slap at the same power, as I'm at least not guaranteeing my opponent a chance to hit me first, giving them an opportunity to flinch, status, or set up any boosts. 75 base power moves are actually all pretty good. Solid secondary effects all around, solid accuracies, all usable moves. I ended up deciding on Lash Out as my choice. Not a bad move, just less useful than the others at this base power. It doubles in powers if you had a stat lowered during the turn, which usually only comes into play if an Intimidate Pokemon comes in on you. Otherwise, this effect will only activate if you are slower and they use a stat dropping move which isn't the most common thing to see. I considered Signal Beam, but it's a pretty good coverage option for the electric types that have access, while most Slash Out users will have better options in Crunch or Knock Off. 80 base power moves were a lot easier to decide. Even though there are like 70 moves with this power, and most are great, I have no problem narrowing it down to two. If you watch my worst move of each type video, you might remember these two. The first move is Slam, not Body Slam, that move is actually really good. Slam is a hated move of mine due to its 75% accuracy and no secondary effect. You will miss this move a lot, that's the map bud guarantee. I'd rather have Vice Grip or Horn Attack on my moveset than this move. 
and it's actually learned late enough that you will have more reliable options to use. It is truly a bad move, but one I feel is worse is the move Razor Wind. When it gains in accuracy and a high critical hit ratio, it loses in being a charging move. It is simultaneously the worst charging move and the worst spread move. As an 80 power special normal type move would rarely be seen even if it wasn't a charging move. You have the much better hyper voice right there. And I'd say even Swift is a lot better than this move. Onto the 85 base power moves, we have moves strong enough to be used as good coverage options. The move Sky Uppercut is pretty old class nowadays, but still is a solid move. I'm going to give the worst spot to Bounce though. With a matching 85% accuracy, this move springs up on the first turn and attacks on the second. It has a solid 30% chance to paralyze, but the fact that it is a two turn move really hurts its competitive viability. The invulnerable turn is easy to play around once your opponent sees this move. It can switch into a resist or take the opportunity for free setup. And if you miss, which I feel like this move does a lot, then you burn two turns and likely got no reward. All the other moves here just don't class it, leaving it as a choice for worst. 90 base power has your thunderbolts, flamethrowers, ice beams, iconic moves, but it also has some pretty unusable moves. And these so happen to be, you guessed it, normal type moves. The first one and runner up I want to mention is uproar. This would be a solid move if it didn't lock you in for 3 turns as it prevents sleep when in use. But for the worst move I have to go with takedown. A 90 base power recoil move with just 85% accuracy. It kind of sucks to be punished with recoil on a move that has a decent miss chance, such a bland offensive typing, and lower base power. Double edge for comparison is at least reliable and strong. This move is one I would avoid in playthroughs as I hated taking damage and missing it half the time I used it. Closing out the double digits at 95 base power, we see just a few options. I rule out Moonblast, Mighty Cleave, Foul Play, and Heat Wave as they are all very common competitively. So I'm left with high horsepower, which has a niche of being a single target strong ground type move, not weakened in grassy terrain, and then sludge wave. Unfortunately, it's just the odd man out. It's the preferred option for sheer force Pokemon like Landorus, Nidoking, and Nidoqueen, but it's here more on virtue of just being passed over for sludge bomb. The five base power isn't a big trade off for the extra 20% you have to poison the target. In doubles it targets everyone including your teammates, so you would have to play around that too, which might not be worth it for an offensive typing that isn't the most effective. Still a solid move though, but I had to pick something. We get into the triple digits here. While there are some 100 base power moves you wouldn't see much due to accuracy like Iron Tail and Dragon Rush, they do at least have nice secondary effects. The worst move however, shares a poor accuracy, but lacks anything good to make up for it. Meet Egg Bomb. A terrible move distributed to just a few lines, and for some reason was a TM in generation 1, with Mew being the only one to learn it that didn't already get it by level up. But pretty much it's a normal move with solid power, but a dreadful 75% accuracy and no secondary effect. Just another pointless generation 1 normal type move that hasn't seen any improvements. Now for 110 base power moves, I thought a lot about what the worst one could be. All these moves are good. So ideally I don't want to put any of them in a worst moves list, but I have to. My initial thoughts were to put something like Clanging Scales here, since it lowers defense, but it's used on Como over the likes of Draco Meteor and is a sound based move. Poltergeist is an option since it can miss, and fails if the target doesn't have an item, but it really is the premier physical ghost type move. There are some inaccurate moves here that are really good in weather, Blizzard is nice to hit both opponents and pretty much always run on hail users and abusers. Hurricane is seen in and outside of its weather with a nice confusion chance, but unfortunately I think I'll have to give the worst move of this power to the move Thunder. It is 70% accurate, but always hits in the rain. A 30% paralysis chance is better than Thunderbolt 2, but you just don't see it too often other than on Kyogre, who has rain accompanying it. Definitely not a bad move, but people opt to run Thunderbolt as the power difference isn't too big of a trade off for being able to comfortably hit outside of rain. At 120 base power, we see a lot of the best moves in Pokemon, but we do have some bad and borderline useless moves. A move like Mega Kick is pretty bad, but that's just because low accuracy and is still decent when it hits. Belch needs to use a berry to work, but otherwise is a fine move. 
A move that makes both of those look good though, is the move Synchronoise. It is a 120 base power psychic type move that has the wacky effect of only hitting a target if it shares a typing with the user. This is a crazy concept for a move, especially on a typing that resists itself. If it was a dragon or ghost type move, maybe it would see some niche use, but there is no point to ever run this move. The only mons who learn this move who I could see it even working on are the normal flying types that have access. It's still going to be a dead move slot 95% of the time, making it not worth your time to put it over an actually useful move. 125 base power sees another downfall. The best move from the previous video was Solar Blade, and the worst move at this base power is Solar Blade. It has an odd base power, which I think is cool, and there should be more moves that fill in the cracks between these high base powers. Why no 135 and 145 power moves? Anyways, let's get on to the next move. 130 base power has the last bad normal type move on the list in Skull Bash. This move could have actually avoided being on this list if it wasn't buffed from 100 power as I think it's better than Egg Bomb. It at least raises your defense on the charge turn which is somewhat useful. And I think if this move was on a better offensive typing, it could actually be usable in the right scenarios. The runner up here is Steel Roller as it is a really strong attack but can only be used if there is terrain active and then it removes the terrain. So it has a purpose, but most of the time will be a dead move slot. 140 base power isn't the greatest assortment of moves. There definitely are some bangers in there, but for the most part, we don't see about half these moves used much. For the worst choice, I'm going to go with another charge move. This is Kiram White's Ice Burn. You can put Free Shock here too, they're both pretty bad. If you want to know why Ice Burn is worse then, check out this video on the worst signature moves of each type. 150 base power has a buttload of recharging moves that I considered. These hit extremely hard, then the user has to recharge after. They're all pretty bad competitively, as it's generally a last resort move to have, and it's better to just attack twice and not give the opponent a free turn. I was going to give the spot to Giga Impact, mostly because it's normal, lacking super effective hits, but I will point out that in Generation 7, it was at least seen a bit on Kurtana to have a really strong neutral Z moves to take on the likes of Zapdos. The real worst move though is going to Shell Trap. This is Turtonator's signature move and it sucks because getting it to actually work means taking a physical hit. So you already can't use this move against special attackers, then you have to go second as this move has negative priority. It's a lot of work to make this move happen and once you attempt it, it will be harder to pull off again. At 160 base power we have 3 options, but Gigaton Hammer is the only good move here so that's next. Then the other moves are essentially the same in Prismatic Laser and Eterna Beam. With Prismatic Laser having 100% accuracy and Eterna Beam having 90%, I was able to decide Eterna Beam is just slightly worse. They both have a type immune to it, they are pretty even offensive typings, so that's not really a factor. So in the end, accuracy loses this one for Eternatus' signature move. I'm dying. Help me. These last three moves are going to be the same as the ones on my best moves list. They are the only options for their respective power. 180 base power is V-Create, a great move that has stat drop drawbacks, but it's amazing nonetheless. At 200 base power we have Self Destruct, an annoying move in game when trying to catch Pokemon, but the only option for this base power. And at 250 base power, we cap it off with Explosion. The strongest move in the game, you blow yourself up and try to do as much damage as possible. A more useful move in earlier generations when it half the opponent's defense stat. So those are the worst moves of each base power. Do you agree with my list? Are there moves you think are worse that should be mentioned? Let me know in the comments. Also consider becoming a bud and hitting that sub if you haven't already. And if you like this video, you should check out this one next. Take it easy buds. Baba Booey.